Relativistic jets. They're some of the most terrifying and beautiful phenomena in the known universe. Based on our current understanding, as matter falls into a black hole, it gets super accelerated, causing some of the particles to not only survive, but to also be ejected into the distant reaches of space, reaching relativistic speeds. Mostly, we find these jets around supermassive black holes that rest in the centers of giant galaxies. These things can stretch for light years and light years of distance. That's where radio galaxies come in. Radio galaxies are some of the most spectacular objects in the night sky. They're basically a subclass of active galactic nuclei that happen to be extremely bright. Well, at least at radio wavelengths. When viewed in radio wavelengths, these radio galaxies can get as bright as 10 to the 39th watts and 100 gigahertz. This is a video of the Centaurus A radio galaxy in multiple wavelengths. The radio galaxy is one of the largest objects in the night sky. Well, at least those visible by the naked eye, as we'll be learning further on in this video. Centaurus A is one of the closest radio galaxies to Earth, sitting at a distance of 13.05 million light years, and its relativistic jets produce intense X-ray and radio emissions. It has a radius of 48,500 light years, and it's 13.7 billion years old. Which is all to say it's a fairly large radio galaxy, but it's not the largest, nor even the largest radio galaxy in the universe. No, that particular title belongs to a newly discovered object that is raising some interesting questions for astronomers hoping to understand how these objects grow as massive as they do. This is an image of a galaxy resting some 3 billion light years away from us. It's a radio galaxy that astronomers have named Alcyonis. It's a radio galaxy that astronomers have named Alcyonis. Alcyonis, in Greek mythology, was a giant and the offspring of Gaia born from Uranus, who had been castrated. Don't ask. Greek mythology gets real weird sometimes. But you get the point. The galaxy was named after a mythical giant, and that's pretty fitting because this thing is seriously gargantuan, clocking in at 16.3 million light years across. According to the accompanying pre-published paper's abstract, linked in the description, the radio galaxy has a proper projected length of 4.99 megaparsecs and a possible true length of 5.014 megaparsecs. A megaparsec, for reference, is equal to 3.26 million light years. So, as we just mentioned, this galaxy is 16.3 million light years across. Holy crap. This thing would absolutely dwarf Centaurus A, which again has a radius around 48,500 light years. Saying this thing is big is seriously an understatement. It's the biggest galaxy, period. Well, that we've found so far. Great Alcyonis was first discovered in the low resolution images from the LOFAR 2 meter sky survey. It's thought that this behemoth of a radio galaxy could shed quite a bit of light on the subject of how radio galaxies are capable of growing so massive. This is figure two from the preprint paper. This image basically illustrates how easy it is for a radio galaxy's lobes to be lost when they're observed at standard resolutions. Figure three reveals that the outer structures of Alcyonis can't be supernova remnants, radio halos, or even radio relics, which sounds like something you'd find in Mass Effect. As a quick aside, since this feels like a relatively new term, at least to this channel's vast library of content, hint, you should binge that content. Looking up at the moon, you might think that it's relatively benign. Well, within reason. We've come a long way, haven't we? Essentially, radio relics refer to objects with diffuse radio sources. These objects typically reside in galactic clusters, and one of their telltale signs is a radio synchrotron emission. No, not a securitron. Synchrotron! Which sounds really similar when I say it like that. And I'm not even sure that calling these things objects is even accurate, because in some cases they're caused by shockwaves that form as a result of a cluster merger, which is what happens when clusters of galaxies gravitationally merge. These are some of the most energetic events ever detected. And, you know, given that this radio galaxy is about 16 million light years large, I can see why they would want to check for radio remnants. Anyway, 
Moving on, the rest of the images in this preprint paper represent this massive galaxy's radio lobes. And according to that paper, the images you're seeing right now are of the most sensitive survey ever conducted for radio galaxy lobes. Active galactic nuclei, as well as inactive galactic nuclei like the Milky Way, also feature these kind of lobe formations. Now, with a stellar giant like that of Alcyonis, we might rightly expect that its properties would be extraordinary, right? Shouldn't a massive galaxy come with an unusually large supermassive black hole and all sorts of other unusual characteristics? Well, no, not really. The abstract for the preprint paper that has been accepted for publication in astronomy and astrophysics suggests that this supermassive galaxy is suspiciously ordinary. The supermassive black hole at the center of Alcyonis is somewhere around 400 million times the mass of our Sun. And while that is certainly much more massive than Centaurus A's supermassive black hole, it's actually not that massive compared to other radio galaxies we've observed. So, if the team behind this discovery is right, then the clues as to why radio galaxies grow so massive should theoretically be hidden within a galaxy like Alcyonis. But with a galaxy exhibiting measurements that are fairly ordinary, even being considered on the low end of what the mass, luminosity, density, and supermassive black hole mass would ordinarily be, then that would mean that these things are not a contributing factor to the galaxy's growth. And if all of those things are true, then the galaxy's radio power wouldn't be a contributing factor either. So, what then could be causing this behemoth's continued expansion? It's generally accepted that supermassive black holes grow by sucking up gas, dust, and nearby stellar objects, and, as we explained, this leads to the formation of relativistic jets. In other videos, we've explained that this process can cause a galaxy to artificially age. Of all the radio galaxies we've observed so far, only around 100 are larger than 2 megaparsecs, and exactly 10 of them are larger than 3 megaparsecs. The previous largest radio galaxy was discovered in 2008, known as J1420545. We really need better names for these. They are there's there's 10 of them. There's 10, that makes them rare, let's give them names. This thing, now the second largest radio galaxy in the known universe, was discovered using the Very Large Array, with its radio bulges taking up 4.4 megaparsecs in length. However, if a giant radio galaxy's size is not determined by the growing supermassive black hole at its center, then what exactly would cause it to grow? And as the paper suggests, continue to keep growing. One solution that is offered is that Alcyonis could exist in a part of space featuring a much lower density than where we typically see galaxies form. This could explain why the galaxy has been able to grow so massive. The other factor to consider is the galaxy's connection to the cosmic web. It's possible that this could have something to do with why Alcyonis is continuing to expand, leading to quote-unquote significant thermodynamic interactions with it. In addition to this, the pressures that the team detected in Alcyonis's lobes are some of the lowest that have ever been discovered. The team suggests that these characteristics make the super radio galaxy, holy space cows, did I just make up a new term? Oh, they already have a term for it? I've been saying it this whole time? Crap. These possibilities, however, are just hypotheses, and a lot more study and modeling needs to be done before a real theory can be produced. Right now, the team behind the paper thinks that the answer may still be hidden somewhere in the giant radio galaxy's radio sky. If you dug this content, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz and share this with someone who loves space, science, and sarcasm. And hey, if you dig stuff on galaxies, check out this video on how our galaxy moves. Wow. Look at all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.